Hello, my name is Jacob Hudis, and recently I've been focusing on my YouTube channel dedicated to physics education. Terrific! I've had the channel for about a year, but I've only been serious about it for the past four months. Currently, the content centers around quantum mechanics with an emphasis on problem solving, although shortly I'll be expanding to cover college freshman physics and AP physics, including topics such as electricity and magnetism, mechanics, thermal and statistical physics, and Einstein's special theory of relativity. One playlist I'm experimenting with involves visiting local colleges and asking students intriguing conceptual physics questions. The goal is to entertain, educate, and to grow my channel. On August 26, 2024, I visited MIT, the alma mater of my father and sister. I asked students and faculty to tackle a range of physics concepts from basic to the most advanced topic, Maxwell's demon and its implication for the second law of thermodynamics. Remarkably, the first person I interviewed was a tenured MIT physics professor specializing in quantum computing, and he provided an outstanding explanation of the Maxwell demon paradox. The outline of the video is as follows. I'll explain the problem and the paradox of Maxwell's demon. Then I'll briefly discuss it with some students on campus. Then I'll get an explanation of the solution of the paradox from MIT professor Aram Harrow. Imagine a thermally insulated container divided by a partition. On one side, we have hot gas particles labeled in red, moving rapidly. On the other side, we have colder gas particles labeled in white, moving more slowly. These particles are all the same, but the color helps us track which particles were initially hot and which were cold. When the partition is opened, the particles mix. The fast-moving red particles will collide with the slower white particles. As they interact, the red particles will slow down and the white particles will speed up until both sides reach a uniform temperature. At equilibrium, the system will follow a Maxwell-Boltzmann velocity distribution. This means that while most particles will have similar average speed, some will be moving slower and some will be moving faster than the average. This process illustrates thermal equilibrium. The total energy of the system stays constant, but the entropy, or disorder, increases as the particles spread out and their speeds even out. Now let's consider a different situation. Imagine a box of gas that has already reached thermal equilibrium. Now we place a partition dividing the two sides. Because the gas was in equilibrium before the partition, each side will have roughly the same number of particles with the same distribution of speed. To simplify our explanation, we'll assume that the fast-moving particles are labeled in red and the slow-moving particles are labeled in white. In reality, the particles have a continuous range of speeds, but for the purpose of teaching this concept, we'll consider just two distinct speeds, fast red and slow white. Now we can explain Maxwell's demon thought experiment. Maxwell imagined a thought experiment where a hypothetical creature, often referred to as Maxwell's demon, exists within the isolated system. The demon controls a frictionless, fast-moving door placed in the partition. By the way, the picture's a joke. He's not my candidate of choice, but I'm not trying to make a political statement or be controversial. If you find it offensive, you can let me know in the comment section below. Whenever the demon observes a fast-moving red particle approaching the partition, it quickly opens the door to let the particle pass through and then closes it immediately. By selectively allowing only fast particles to move to one side and slow particles to remain on the other, the demon could theoretically separate the mixture. Initially, the system is in a high entropy state, with hot and cold particles evenly mixed. However, by the demon's actions, the particles would end up separated, fast particles on one side and slow particles on the other. This scenario doesn't violate the law of conservation of energy, as no energy is being created or destroyed. However, it seemingly violates the second law of thermodynamics, which states that the entropy of an isolated system should not decrease. In this case, the entropy of the system, and by extension the universe, would decrease as the particles become more ordered, raising significant questions about the fundamental nature of thermodynamics. And here's the question. To the MIT community, as well as anyone out there in YouTube land, what are your thoughts on Maxwell's demon? Does it violate the second law of thermodynamics? Have you encountered any arguments that explain why it might be wrong? These were three incoming MIT freshmen. They were right out of high school. None of them had ever taken a single class at MIT. They've been accepted to MIT, and they were about to start their first year of school at MIT. Congratulations, guys. So just explain the setup. Just, yeah. Oh, there's, there's a box, and there's like a partition in the middle. And then, what'd you say, Maxwell's demon? Yeah, there's a little like, demon, a little guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He basically was able to separate... The, the fast moving molecules and the slow moving molecules and then so that means that one side is hot one side is cold yeah. what do you think actually do you think you could really set up a situation like that if we had a, a, a tiny guy that was like able to see that mm -hmm. uh, and, and like all the molecules 
all the fast molecules were able to come through this one. Um, in short, short answer, yes. Do you think you could? What, what do you think? What do you think? Do you, have you ever heard of entropy? Yes. Yeah. Would the entropy, would the entropy of the box increase or decrease? It box? would stay the so same. It would, no, it would it would decrease, right? Because well, if you had all the hot ones on one side and all the cold ones on one side, the entropy would decrease. Yeah. Because Do you know that? Yes. Okay, why would it why would it decrease? Well there's less movement happening, so there's less chaos, I guess. This is a very hard question. This is this is what is, what is the right answer? What would the right answer be? Uh, what's your name? Aram. And are you a postdoc or graduate? I'm student? a professor. Oh you're a professor? Even, I am. Wow. Yeah. Jeez, yeah. Awesome. That's really great. Yeah. Okay. What uh, area do you study in? I do this? quantum computing. Quantum, really cool school. Yeah. Well, it's this great. is uh, Maxwell's demon. Yes. Proposed that um, if you have, you know, let's say these those glass doors right there, you know, divide this part of the room from that part of the room, and the demon will open up a little hole and let the fast moving gas go to one side. But if it's a slow moving a uh, molecule, then the demon will swing the, the door shut. Um, the demon controls the door without using any energy, and the molecules boss bounce off elastically, so no, nothing's dissipated. And then all of a sudden, you have hot gas on one side and cold gas on the other. You can use this to run a turbine, generate free electricity. So, you know, why are we still digging up oil if we can do this? This is the question. Well, this is, a, yeah, this is, I mean, people still debate this one. I think a lot of people liked Rolf Landauer's resolution of this in the 60s. He worked at IBM. And his story was that the, uh, others as well, but uh, basically this sto the story of the demon makes it sound like after the molecule is bounced off, you've come back to where you started. So if you want a perpetual... Wait, what, what do you mean after it's bounced off? Okay, so yeah, maybe the question about the demon is why can you not use this to... Uh, make a perpetual motion machine, or to or to make entropy decrease. I guess that's a, that's the, the, the same thing, right? Well, yeah, my refrigerator can make entropy decrease inside the fridge, and no one's very impressed by that no. because the entropy inside the fridge is decreased, but it's dumped the heat out of the coils in the back. Right. Right. So w that is something that wouldn't cause any problems with the second law of thermodynamics, uh -huh. but decreasing the entropy of the world of the universe, that would, that would be weird. Yes. And that could allow a perpetual motion machine. Okay. If my fridge could cool off my, uh, my food without heating up the rest of the house, you know, I could make a perpetual motion machine out of that. Uh -huh. So, uh, or without needing electricity from the, you know. Mm -hmm. So, um, Maxwell's demon, if the demon, what the demon is doing is cooling one side of the room and heating the other side of the room, right? Mm -hmm. The air was all the same, and then the demon manages to separate them in temperature. Uh -huh. If the demon needs a supply of electricity or a place to put waste heat, we're somehow not very impressed by that. Uh -huh. And so the, for this to really be a paradox, the demon has to come back to the same state that it started in. Uh -huh. If the demon had a battery, for example, uh -huh. and at the beginning the demon had a full battery, and at the end the demon had an empty battery, you would not find that to be a paradox, uh -huh. right? Now... We said that the demon can operate the door without using energy. And that's, I think you can make a reasonable case for that, at least in, in, some, in some limit. So what changes about the demon? The demon is not running down its battery, but it's learning which side of the partition the gas molecule was on. Uh -huh. So uh, this is kind of a weird thing, but it's, it's gaining information. In its, in its brain. In its brain. Okay. And its brain is going to fill up with information. Uh -huh. And Landauer, this is kind of amazing, showed kind of using arguments like this that forgetting information has a thermodynamic cost to it. It costs energy to, to, work, to forget. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, which is pretty wild. So, so the idea you're saying is by, as he gains information in his head, yeah. he is... Is that decreasing entropy of, of the, the, the demon? Oh, that's increasing. Increasing. He's increasing the entropy. So even though the entropy of the, of the gas right. is decreasing, the demon's right. entropy is increasing. Right. And is that, is exactly. that what you're Yeah, so you can think of it like 
Every molecule is either on the left side of the room or the right side of the room. Uh -huh. You could call that a bit, zero or one. And then, so there's a bunch of, and they're all random bits. Mm -hmm. So to describe the gas, you can do, you know, it's a string of random zeros and ones. Uh -huh. And then the demon puts, let's, let's say we're just talking about the fast molecules. The demon puts all the fast molecules on the left side. So all these zeros and ones just turned into all zeros. Mm -hmm. Then, so that string that had a bunch of zeros and ones turns into just a string of zeros. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that information, that entropy has been erased from the gas molecules, but it hasn't disappeared from the universe. It's gone into the demon's brain. The demon learns, oh, this molecule was a one, this molecule was a zero, uh -huh. and, and so on. Okay. Thank so, you. Yeah. That is really happy I ran into I don't you. Know. So now let me summarize and explain the solution to the paradox. The system is the combination of both the box of gas and the demon. The gas molecules have entropy, and the demon has entropy consisting of information in its head. Information is entropy. So the entropy of the system is the entropy of the gas molecules plus the entropy of the demon. In this case, the gas molecules are spread all throughout the box. On this side, there are hot and cold gas molecules, and on this side, there are both hot and cold gas molecules. Therefore, the gas is in a high entropy state. The demon knows which gas molecules are hot and which ones are cold, so the demon has low entropy. This is because the demon has a lot of information. The demon needs to know about every individual gas molecule and how quickly it's going. In this case, the hot gas molecules are on the right side of the box and the cold gas molecules are on the left side of the box. Therefore, the gas is in a low entropy state. The demon knows that the gas molecules on the right are hot and those on the left are cold, but not the state of individual particles. Hence, the demon has high entropy. This is because the demon has much less information. It's much less information to say, all these particles are hot and all these particles are cold than to say, this particle is cold, this particle is cold, this particle is hot, this particle is hot. So if the demon needs to know, if the demon needs to know information about every individual particle, that's a lot more information than if the demon needs to know just that the particles on this side are hot and on this side are cold. If the demon changes the gas from a high entropy state to a low entropy state, the, the information of the demon changes from a low entropy state to a high entropy state. Therefore, the entropy of the entire system does not decrease, and the second law of thermodynamics is still intact. If you have any thoughts on the Maxwell demon paradox, please leave them in the comment section below. If you have any ideas for good questions to ask college students, please leave them in the comment section below. If you are a student at any university in the Boston area and are interested in doing physics-related content on my channel, please let me know in the comment section below. Please like and subscribe to my channel. Finally, I want to give a big thank you to Professor Harrow for being in my video and teaching us about Maxwell's demon. AcePhysics.org Math and Physics Tutoring with Dr. H AcePhysics.org Math and Physics Tutoring with Dr. Hudis.